Good evening, everybody. This is Patrick. Today's the 29th of November. I just sent out several more packages today uh, to the IRS. I'm going to detail in what I sent out to the IRS to basically get paid from my side commissary account. I want to start off with a one simple item, okay? There's a lot of misleading information put out by all these gurus that are out there charging money, and even some of them that aren't charging money, that basically are trying to control you in so many different ways. I have no wannabe or ego in trying to control you. I, it appears that way at times because I really love humanity. I want to try and protect the country and make things right. That's my only goal. I'm not out to try and harm anybody in any way. I am just trying to find out the truth. We're going to start off with taking a simple look at the dollar bill, the Federal Reserve dollar. On there, there are two things that basically have been misinterpreted or misled, leading the people into false uh, sense of what's going on. The first one is, in God we trust. Now, you may not comprehend what I'm about to say on this, but when you sit down and really think about it, you should come to the same understanding. It says, in God we trust. The country of America was set up, and at the start of the preamble, and in almost all the states, the preamble starts off, we the people of the state or of America. It's we the people that own this country. It's we the people that own the state. The corporations, the United States or the state of Iowa Corporation, all capital letters, in those titles are corporations. We, the people, even own those corporations because we're the shareholders of those corporations. The share, a corporation cannot own anything. It's a fiction. We are the reality. And we own it. We have to step up and start acting like the owners that we are, not with uh, unbridled uh, authority and saying, we're in control and all this and that. No, we have to know <clears throat> what we have the rights to do. Our rights are protected. So, it is what in God we trust really should be saying it. In your soul's name, we have created a trust for you. It was at one time called a SESTA-K trust. It has been reclassified as a BIDE commissary. BIDE is another word for trust. So it is a trust commissary. A commissary was where you could go down to sort of like a store. You'd go down and pick things off the shelf and just sign for them. So, we have a birthing side commissary. That is also where a male has his shares of the corporation. I'm sorry, women, but basically you were only given a dowry. We're supposed to merge with a man because that's the way uh, the natural uh, laws uh, work. The other thing on the dollar bill is that pyramid. You see an all-seeing eye at the top of the pyramid. That's 
That means that we're supposed to wake up and see that that is us. That we're supposed to be at the top of the pyramid. Yes, there's a lot of evil stuff that goes on and perpetrated out there to cause us to go the wrong direction. But look beneath it and you will see the truth. You will see yourself looking back at you. That's what the pharaohs took out of Egypt. The gold off the Great Pyramid. That was their payment for the servitude for 210 years. Not slavery, but servitude. They had put up their collateral uh, for the pharaoh to build his empire. That was what was owed back to the people for the interest that they were due. This money system has not changed down through the years. It's a wagering money system that the money changers use. It wasn't created here by the Rothschilds just in the last 300, 300 years. This system has been in place in the Assyrians, in the uh, Medes, in the Greeks, in the Romans, in the Jews, empires, in the Egyptian empires. The same money system, the money changers, have used the same system over and over again. It's a wagering system. And the wager is that we're not going to come forward and pay with real substance for a certain duration of time. And in this country, it is three years. At the end of three years, all bets are off. They have to be settled. So a mortgage is fully paid at the end of three years. The next 27 years is total fraud. Your traffic ticket stays on the book with the court for three years. Then it's paid for. Then it comes off the books. Who owes the insurance? Who owes the real taxes in this country? It is not the people. It is the corporations that owe them. We have to turn around and do 1099-Cs and 1099-As to pick up the abandoned property that we're leaving laying around. We cancel the debt that basically they owe to us. Then the debt is paid. We're operating, we should be operating under uh, <clears throat> the right of discussion. And in the right of discussion, the creditor has to call in the principal debtor to pay his debt first before we can basically pay our debt if we do owe one. Because we've not been paid for the fee of using our property as asset. They're writing bonds. They're also turning around and giving us a dry exchange where they're giving us one Federal Reserve dollar for uh, ten. They keep nine. They cause inflation. They're driving our prices up higher and higher, making us pay more and more for things that basically are not really any higher. The price of an automobile should be the same as it was back in 1960, $2,500. But now it's 10 times as much, $25,000, because of the banker's inflation. It's a fictional uh, operation of their money system. When we take the power away from them, we will get back down to reality. Now, how do we start doing that? We were told, basically, when we were growing up, to learn the ABCs. The ABCs did not refer to the alphabet. The ABCs were the 1099A, the 1099B, and the 1099C. 
1099A is for acquisition or for picking up abandoned property. The 1099B is for bartering transactions. The 1099C is for canceling debts. In this country, our five commissary, our birthing trust, is the Bank of America. That's where all the real assets are being held. We are our own private bank within the empire of America. We are the treasury. And then basically all the banks together form the Central Bank of America. Because they're all centralized. Okay? Now, if we're the bank, and we've got an account at that bank, and we're the sole account holder in our little bank, and we want to borrow some money from our bank, do we need to pay the bank back? No. If we're going out and buying something with it, basically we're going to do, be doing an exchange. One asset for something else. Only we won't be holding it in the bank. We will be holding it out here on our other hand, uh, out in the real world. So, we want to do an acquisition. We want to go out and buy a farm. Or we want to buy a house. Or we want to buy a new car or pickup. Whatever. We go down, we find out how much it is. We turn around and say, okay, I'm going to go to the bank, my bank, for a loan. You take a 1099A. You fill out the name of your bank. In my case, it's Patrick Devine, all capitalized. That is my vessel bank. It's my Social Security Trust. Now, the first thing before you start this process, you're going to have to do a Form 56. And a Form 56 basically is to identify the fiduciary over that account. So you're going to set it up, the name of the person who you are acting for. And basically that's going to be your capital name, Social Security account. The fiduciary's name is going to be your name. And I would put Esquire behind it. Because you, when you turned 18 or when you signed your Social Security card, you became an executor over that trust. It's not an estate, it's a trust. So you became the executor of the trust. You put down the identification number, you put down uh, your name and everything, fill all that out. That's part one. Part two is authority. What is your authority for the fiduciary relationship? You go down to 1C. It's a valid trust instrument and amendment. That's your Social Security card that you sign. And basically the date that you turned 18 you became the executor of that Social Security Accessing Trust. That was the date of your assignment. You were assigned executor. You go down to Part 3. You fill out the type of taxes that you're going to do. Uh, basically, all uh, taxes, that income, excess, uh, withholding, and return. You don't have to just use their words that they have on the form. Think what you're doing. Federal income tax numbers. Well, uh, the 1040 if you're doing an individual one, and all 1099s. The years. I would go back all the way to the start when I turned 18 and say I'm going to be in control of all those years back 
up to the present day and on forward until basically I close this Social Security Trust down. If so you mark, uh, and then uh, block five. Then basically you go down to block four, and it says revocation or termination notice. And basically you're going to terminate all other fiduciary relationships out there. You want to be the sole fiduciary over this account. Then you come down and you sign it. And you're going to be the executor over that Social Security account. So you are the executor of that account. That's your title. Again, I would sign everything, basically, Patrick Divine, Esquire. That's my physical body. That's really not me. That's my artificial person. The human body is artificial. The soul is the real person. Okay, so that covers the, and you need to do one for your individual Social Security Trust. If you set up a living trust, you're going to have to do the same thing for that. The individual uh, Social Security Trust goes to wherever you send your 1040 form. If you do a living trust, you're going to be filing a 1041 form, and that Form 56 has to be sent to where that 1041 form is to be processed at. Okay. Now, let's go back to the 1099A. We want to do an acquisition for that vehicle. And basically, we're going to uh, be filling the 1099A out this way, uh, that we are going to put down the lender, our bank's name the Social Security all capital name and put down the address that the Social Security that they have down for you, uh, Social Security. Uh, phone number, you put that in there too. Okay, then you come down, lenders, federal identification number. That's the Social Security number. Then you drop down to borrower's name. That's going to be your name, Esquire. Or if you don't want to put Esquire on, just put your name. Or if you're going to uh, send it over to your living trust, you can put down the beneficial owner's name of the living trust. You put down the address of the city, state, and all that. Come down, account number. You're going to make up a personal invoice for what you want to purchase. Now we go back up to the borrower's identification number. Well, the borrower's identification number, if this is on an individual basis, is going to be your Social Security number. Yes, both the lender and the borrower have the same number. Don't worry about it. This is scanned into the system. No IRS agent will be seeing this. So they're not going to bounce it back and say, oh, there's both those numbers are the same. we got to bounce this one. No, it will go in. And if it don't go in, then basically we will be on them like flies on shit. Because it's our bank and we're the owner of that bank. Now, if you're doing it for your living trust, you would put your EIN number for the living trust. You go over the date of the lender's acquisition, or uh, you put down the date you want there. You put the balance of the principal outstanding. You haven't been paid yet out of your bank yet. So you put down the amount that you're asking for. The fair market value of the property is the same amount. Both of them the same, two and four. 
You go down to, was the borrower personally liable for repayment of the debt? No. You're just doing a exchange. And then you put down the description of the property. Now, there's a copy A. The copy A goes back to where you send your, you have to send in uh, 1096 along with this copy uh, 1099A. You mark the 1096 down. You put the amount in block 2 in block 4 on the 1096. There is nothing on block 5 on the 1096. Read the instructions. So you send the red copy into where you send them. I send mine into Kansas City. Okay. Copy B is going to be basically, I think, for the uh, lender or the, the borrower. I forget which one. Anyway, basically, you're going to keep both the B and the C copy. You take the lender's copy and put it in the Social Security bank file. You keep the bank's file. It's your bank. You set up a file for your bank. And then you take the other copy, the borrower's file, that's your individual copy or your trust copy, and you put it into the appropriate file there. If you're doing this on an individual basis, then you turn around and you do a 1040 form to get paid. The 1099A was working with the bank loan officer in the back room. He gave you a sheet and said, okay, go out to the cashier. We're going out to the cashier. We need to have something to give to the cashier to get our money. That is the 1040 form. You fill out the first part of the 1040 form, the header. You go down to line 7. You skip from line 7 all the way down to line 61. You put in the amount that was in block 2 on the 1099A in line 61. You total that column up now, and that takes you down to, I think it's line 71 or something, or 70. You put that in there where it says total. Then you come down and say, okay, the next two blocks you'll fill out is overpayment. That will be the same as what was put in line 61 and in the total. And then you say, how much do you want back? Well, I want it all that I have identified. So you put that in the next line. Then you skip down and you sign the thing as the fiduciary. You send that into wherever it says to send your 1040 form in. If you haven't filed a Form 56 with them already, you send a copy of your uh, Form 56 along with this initial request. That is your receipt that 1040 is your receipt to give to the cashier so that you can get paid. This was so damn simple, it's ridiculous. Now, if you're doing one for your living trust, you will be doing a 1041 form. That either goes to Ogden, Utah, or Cincinnati, Ohio. And there again, you'll have to do a 10, uh, or a form 56 on your initial filing if you haven't already sent one to them. And basically you turn around and fill out the 1041 uh, form pretty much the same way you did the 1040 form. You identify how much was in Block 2 on the 1099A. That's how much needs to come back to you. I hope this, 
helps a little here. I will go into a little better detail. I just wanted to throw this one out there. Get you people off dead center and get out there and try and start figuring some of this stuff out. If you can't handle this, then basically leave it alone. Stay under their control. I put Today I'm going to be putting up five or four documents. One is going to be learn the ABCs and get your cap. That's going to be Rev 2A. The other one is going to be the American Remedy, Rev 3A. I'm putting another, the Kingdom of America and You, Part 5 up, and that is basically word definition. I strongly re recommend that you take the time to read those word definitions that I pulled out of the dictionary for you so that you can help yourself in understanding what is going on. And then I put another one up there, questions that should have been asked a long time ago by the people to see what is really going on and who some of the other controllers are. This is my interpretation of the answers that I put down is my answers to how I would answer the question. You might come up with some better answers to the question. But basically, they should have been asked because they were never, ever properly answered. I just wanted to throw this one out, get you to start thinking, and get you off of dead center, show you that I am telling you that you can gain some access to your money. I have a bunch of other stuff out with the IRS. I will cross that road when the time comes to it. I sent one out last Thursday for roughly $479,000. For Friday. I sent out two today. That one last Friday went, uh, was against my living trust or for my living trust. One today, I sent another one out for my living trust for around $3 million transfer. And then I did one on an individual basis for uh, the 1040 filing just to do that. And that was for $220,000. I put these in. They need to have something to prove to you people. But you don't have to wait for me to prove it to you. You have to prove it to yourself. So, I hope the hell this wakes you up and gets you off of dead center. Listen to this tape several times. Read those four documents. I tried to lay it out and explain how the money system works. It's a wagering money system. Everything has to be settled. All wagers and bets have to be settled at the end of three years. But the banks do not tell you that, and we keep paying them for something that's already been paid for by the bonds that they wrote against our account. So you're giving your labor away to shysters that aren't worth a hill of beans. They just want control over us. Wake up. Understand who you are, and then basically you will have the power not to abuse, but to operate the right way and become a true, true patriot. Not one of these bullshit patriots out here, but a true patriot and defender of the country and of the world. Okay, I'm done for tonight. Uh, again, this is Patrick. Thank you for your time.